Um, good evening, everyone. So nice to have so many of you here, and a really big thank you for against hell, high weather, snow, train strikes. You all made it, so congratulations. Um, we're so delighted to host you tonight in the beautiful Tracer Tami Clinic in Notting Hill. I think you'll agree it's just the most beautiful space we've ever hosted a talk, so thank you for being here. Um, honestly, I, I totally believe that. Um, I see a few familiar faces in the audience, but for anyone I've not met, I'm Francesca Oakman White, and I'm the founder of the Beauty Triangle. Um, so we're here tonight, our last talk of 2022, to talk about seasonal planning. Um, obviously, Christmas, the holiday season, is drawing near. Life is picking up pace, and I think we can all agree that the one thing that is most likely taking a backseat right now is our wellness. Um, so we're very much going to be answering all of these questions about how to look after our skin, maintain our physiques, preserve good gut health and healthy habits over the period of uh, the holiday season. Um, but before we get into any of that, a very little uh, quick background on the beauty triangle. We set up TBT uh, very much as a way to educate and empower our audiences on all aspects of their health and well-being, and always critically from a holistic standpoint. But we also did it to connect you guys with the very trusted, the very most trusted expert voices in the world of wellness, which leads me very neatly on to tonight's amazing panelists. We're joined by uh, the woman of the night, uh, founder <laughs> of this beautiful space, uh, celebrity facialist, Lazy Guru uh, Teresa Tami. We're also joined by resident aesthetic doctor and injectables whiz, Dr. Amy Bibby. And finally, by nutritionist, naturopath, and functional medicine coach. Hopefully, I got that all right. Um, Rosemary <laughs> Ferguson. And and, 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 I know exactly. I have to remember all these things. Um, and they're very much here to be sharing the sort of simple, straightforward routes to looking but also feeling like the best versions of ourselves at Christmas, whether that be the at-home skin hacks, the in-clinic treatments, um, <clears throat> or maybe just the simple nutritional swaps that we can be making these next few weeks so that we go into 2023 feeling brand new and bulletproof. Um, a few quick things. Hopefully you found a program on your seats that has information about our amazing speakers here tonight. There's also a referral card, so if you'd like us to connect you with anyone that you hear speak tonight, just leave your email address, tick the box, we will do the rest. Um, there's an amazing goodie bag, I'm sure you haven't missed that. Um, it's got an amazing product from Teresa and a voucher in there, so definitely do not leave that one behind. And we also have time for some questions at the very end, so if anything occurs to you whilst we're chatting, just if you can save it till the end and then we'll definitely come back to that. Um, I think that's everything, I think I didn't miss anything. I'm going to hand over to the speakers, they're going to say a quick hi, introduce themselves and then we'll get rolling with the conversation. So Teresa, maybe you can kick us off. Hi, I'm Teresa. <laughs> I'm <Rachel. laughs> Um I am a facialist and work from here. And I've been doing my job for 25 years. Oh my God, 25 really? Yeah. That's amazing. I know, it's crazy. Yeah, 25. And I've been working with lasers for about 17 years. I've been in London 15 years. And oh, what else can I tell you? So I, I work with mainly... Um, equipment as opposed to relaxation facials, so work with lasers, and microneedling, um, fractionals and things that make a difference to the skin as opposed to um, massaging your hands. Fluffy days. Do yeah, exactly. I get so upset when people massage my hands in a facial, I'm like, it's on my face. It's a reason it's called a facial. <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. And yes, we've been here for two and a half years, which is crazy to say actually because we got this just at the beginning of lockdown. I can't believe it's been that long. But let's not talk about that one. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you have an amazing new space that you've just opened. Yes, actually, yeah. So we're just about to officially launch um, in the Cotswolds in Long Compton. So that's going to be kind of officially open in January. So I'm super excited. Amazing. So Rose has got me in the Cotswolds now. <laughs> <laughs> They've been desperate yeah, to drag you, you down. You can't get away from me. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Dr. Amy, over to you. Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Vivi. I've been working here for 14, 15 months, something like that now. Um, I've been doing aesthetics for about five years, qualified in 2012. But obviously you have to do all your junior doctor stuff first. Um, absolutely love this industry, love all things skin, love working with Teresa because it gives a bit of a different dimension to what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, I do Botox, fillers, skin boosters, or most people have heard of Profilo now. 
uh, the, the mainstay of my um, procedures here. Amazing. Amazing. I'm looking forward to hearing all about this later. Please <laughs> 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 Raise me. Yeah, hi. I am a nutritionist and a functional medicine practitioner and a natural. <laughs> um, I qualified, I started nutrition 15 years ago. I qualified as functional medicine practitioner three years ago. I'm now doing my master's. I know that's why I would say that I'm really, really and and because, because we're about to be done. I don't have time. I'm now <laughs> doing my MSc in advanced nutrition, which I'm hating every second of. Oh. <laughs> every second. But I'm in the final stretch and doing my dissertation. I am, um, I run. I've had a clinic on Harley Street. I then over lockdown moved. I, I used to have a clinic with Teresa actually in her skin um, clinic. You know, obviously working on skin from the inside is really important. Um, and I now work. If I, I work mostly on Zoom now since the pandemic, but I do work at the Landerhof. I have a clinic there. And my thing about nutrition and functional well-being is very holistic. It's about treating the whole person, their environment. It's also about doing what's doable for them so I'm not interested in putting people on a plan that they're just not going to be able to to stick to because it doesn't work oh, I know after years of experience that you have to make it sustainable and doable and there's no judgment in my clinic <laughs> at all because most I've probably done most things and so um you know I help all sorts of different people with all sorts of different problems and I love it amazing well, you sound like a voice of reason and I think that's really important when it comes to nutrition as well yeah. particularly right now I won't tell you about my limp ball habit, but I feel like you're really disagree with it. There are lots of great extremes that you can use at times, but I think in general there has to be balance. Exactly. I think that's always key, isn't it? Um, well, thank you, ladies. We'll crack on with um, the main conversation now. So my first wonderful speaker is Teresa, obviously. Um, she's introduced herself, but she is the founder of this gorgeous space that we're sat in. She's renowned for her, I feel like she's far too humble to say, some incredible sort of medical grade facials. They really polish the skin. She's an absolute whiz with technology. Um, so we're going to learn a little bit more about that. Um, but Teresa, maybe you can start by telling us what your clients are, are coming to you like at this time of year seeking. Like, What do they want from their skin right now? Um, I think lots of people, I'm trying to think if there's anything different now versus, I guess people start looking towards Christmas and yeah. actually people just sit at home for Christmas these days, right? It's so true. But yeah, I think it's true. Yeah. Right? People like have this whole thing. About Christmas, but, yeah. and it's like, what are you getting ready for? The and TV? actually, you just got you know, to sit at home and <laughs> just like lots of bad food yeah. and drink lots of wine. So true. So we I have like one Christmas party that we might make it to yeah, and it all hinges on that. And actually I feel like, yeah, maybe January should be the time where people's problems. No, but I, I think it's a valid point as well. Like maybe we shouldn't be focusing so much on Christmas and actually it's yeah. like what comes later. I know Rosemary is definitely gonna be sort of touching on that. Yeah. What what does the what does this time of year, at least like the winter, the snow, like do you see that impacting on people's complexions in any yeah. way? So I feel like with the say for example, the the harsh conditions in terms of you know going from minus three at the moment to ten and then central heating yeah is drying people's skin out a little bit and making it a little bit more dehydrated definitely and i think everyone throughout the year but particularly now is wanting you know that glow that glow for christmas and the parties and things it's like it's, word glow it's yeah become this like know, casual right? term for everything but everyone is seeking it like men women all ages like yeah. is is that what everyone comes and asking yeah about? a lot of people want glow but i guess People generally come to us with more problems as opposed to, or, yeah. or maybe me, they come to yeah, exactly. some of the girls if they want to do some sculpting or some brightening or some glow treatments. Yeah. But I personally see people that's got lots of sun damage or capillaries or scarring. Interesting. Um, so kind of more problematic skin. Exactly. And, um, and what's, what's causing all these issues that they're coming with things like the sort of broken capillaries, like where, like the sun damage, like what, what, what's really to blame for all of this? I, I think we all get them at some point, no matter how much you protect your skin. Yeah. But I do think there's been a lot of, not bad education, but you know, my mum didn't think about SPF too much when Definitely. I was, you know, I'm 46, so 20 years ago, I didn't, and sadly the damage is done. But your skin looks amazing from where I'm sat. Oh, that's very sweet. <laughs> I had very, do you remember when I had bad skin? You must no. have I've known you for at least 12, 12 years. years. Yeah. I think you were one of the first facialists I saw when I first started working at Tatler. Oh. Yeah. And you were working on Bond Street. Sorry, so trip down memory lane. So oh, relevant. relevant. <laughs> when I'm, anyway, another, another time. Exactly. But um, yeah, I suffered really badly with skin, so. Rose helped me a lot with my skin actually. And so is, is that sort of one side. of the reasons that you came into doing this? I would say it's what 
then pushed me to be more advanced. So when yeah, I went to exactly. college, I just did beauty college. I didn't do anything particularly yeah. smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, I don't mean just beauty college is anything bad, but you know, I did manicures and massage, but mm. um, soon after starting college, like pretty soon, I developed adult acne. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I suffered really bad with it actually. And it wasn't up until when did we go to my clinic? Maybe six years ago, seven years ago, and, and mm -hmm. was okay. helping me with internal and gut issues and yeah. things like that. That um, sorry, I'm going off a little bit, but yeah, people tend to come to me for more resurfacing treatments and things like that. I guess for things like acne, and that's obviously sort of something that people do present with at any age. Actually, it's not yeah. just the adolescence, like you said, it's adult acne. Mm -hmm. It comes with perimenopause, menopause. Yeah. You know, we're seeing acne at every single chapter of life. It seems yeah. like. How are, you, how are you addressing that? What are you doing to sort of try and calm the appearance and the, prevent The it? first thing I would say to anyone who's breaking out, there's two things. And the first one would be to reduce um, like overuse in oils. Yes, exactly. Um, I'm not super strict on, you know, if your foundation's got oil or moisturizer, you know, mm. we know that moisturizer is made from oil, but the specific oil, so whether it be essentials or mm. what, whichever oil, but cleansing balms as well. And, yeah. and it's, yes, because they're very fat, rich. Right? We, you just see it, you just see it in the skin. They're very rich, and yeah. I think that the club the pores. So that would be number one. And then what really helped me, and, you know, it's not for everyone, is to look at things that's trying to bring down the inflammation if that's the type of acne that someone has. So right. it could be that someone's really congested or someone's congested and they have the acne. So I would get them to take out dairy, cow's milk. Okay, fine. So um, this is where the holistic approach yeah, sort of comes in so with you guys all two having, things. Yeah. And just, you know, look at the skincare routine, um, maybe pop them with some retinol. So oh, really um, interesting, yeah. An 18 year old um, young boy has been coming to us for a while and you know, we, it's, it takes time, but it's really starting to see a difference. But you know, we just put, put him onto a retinol, and he's you know he's only eighteen, but it's still okay for him if it's a low strand. And I'm sure Amy will agree this as as well. But I think acne is one of those things you need to sort of catch it early. And you're, you're saying like he's only eighteen, yeah. but actually I think that's almost age is irrelevant when it comes to acne. Like we yeah. were saying, it happens at any stage, but actually if it does go untreated, then obviously you have all the scarring that manifests as yeah. a result. And, the and then for you the to then treat the scarring, yeah. I mean, that's when you have to use all your lasers and stuff, right? Yeah, so I did a, I've still got some, but I, I did a lot of fractional for my scarring. Yeah. And I've just started them perimenopausal, so I'm HRT and up. Oh, amazing. At the moment, and I'm yeah. starting to get spots again, so... I know, you, you yeah. win some, you lose some, right? You get your hormones into balance and then your skin erupts. So, so how often are you incorporating lasers into your facials? I personally do it, and, and most of the girls actually, in pretty much every one. Really? So we do, we do one facial that doesn't have lasers, so not everyone has to have that. But we have what's called the advanced, yep. and the advanced is you know the general cleaning, the extractions, the basics of a facial. Yeah. And then we go on to do the lasers for pigment and broken capillaries, and then microneedling. But so we get a lot in the face. Is there anything actually. relaxing about a treatment with you? No, no. the cleanse. So <laughs> exactly. I make my girls do a very, bit of a very long a lovely cleanse and SPF, and the red light's quite nice because you get. Yeah. yeah, the red light is like. The end of the LED is so nice at the end as well because it takes down all the inflammation. Exactly. And does so, it's, you know, soothes. I can do it. The poor boy today had about 45 minutes needling extractions. Wow. He was like, that. oh, bless him. And I'm sure he was in. He do you, do you use numbing cream him. when you do any of this? Or no, it's, it doesn't quite go deep enough, maybe? No. And, I, and numbing cream actually. Yeah. It's That's Amy's top layer. You can it? see. It's psychological. I guess. It is a bit actually. Yeah. yeah. I've heard a lot of doctors is, say this. And you. Um, Dilate the capillaries as well. So actually, oh, anyone that ever, anyone ever goes for any redness mm -hmm. treatment, yeah. don't let them use numbing cream because it reduces. So I put I so put patch I did of, that. Yeah. So if you put a patch of, I did it for him today. So I put a patch of numbing cream here yeah. while I was doing things, and then I did a scarring treatment. It's a bit sensitive, and when you went back to the area, it was white. Even when you take the numbing cream off. Oh wow! So, because it, wow. it reduces the the capillaries. Yeah. So actually, you can't then treat because they've kind of... Yeah, exactly. They've yeah. disappeared and then it doesn't work. And yeah. what about the microneedling? What, why are you doing that in treatments? What, what's that helping clients we with? We do... I've named it my, baby microneedling. Yeah. Not that that's it's just my name. Mm -hmm. Makes um, it sound fun, though. Because we do a lot in the treatment, yeah. We just do a really baby one to deliver some vitamins. So the skin's a little bit red afterwards, but not majorly. Yeah. I love microneedling. It's just a nice little kind of... 
you just, you know, by the skin. And does, it, and does it leave a lot of redness in its wake or because it's baby microneedling? Baby, so it, it lasts so. a few hours, right? I did it for you on... Is that baby? <laughs> 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 I kind of got to it. Like, I mean, skin got the worst on my ever. I was like, oh. baby, right, right, right. No, well, no, it that, that's always me with my how, how interesting because I actually you do go you do go red, red. but I did, I did give you a little bit of a, a treatment but on it that was day. Gone, it was gone um, it was gone it was gone it was gone and was she completely gone the day after yeah it just, yeah, yeah. She, she has goggles and it got matched it has goggles <laughs> up and it's like she's been seeing it but this, this area well. is always very it's vascular isn't it yeah. as well and I guess it that's why you don't really you notice quick. it I, I noticed it all myself I was yeah. allergic to microneedling for years I feel yeah. like well, not actually allergic I mean personally I just found it like too, <laughs> it was too dramatic but you know redness. people used to do it they'd numb you up and they'd go over with a two mil needle yeah we are doing a 0.2 to 3. okay so it's far less so it's dramatic like to the skin 0.2 of a mil baby so baby, baby. baby. Tiny, yeah. tiny tiny yeah and um, at this time of year do you find like the late nights the sort of poor diet the drinking do you see that manifesting in clients skin where they come in <coughs> yeah i do you can definitely tell if someone's dehydrated whether that's yeah. from drinking the night before or just not you know, maybe even just not getting enough sleep and drinking water. How, how can you how can you tell? Like the skin just feels different. I feel somehow. like it's maybe a bit crepier. Yeah. And just duller. Yeah. So people think they've got dry. So many people think, oh, I've got dry skin. Or they say I've got dry skin, and they mm. haven't. It's just dehydrated. And then they slap dry the skin's oil on dry. it. You know, you see the, the flake. Down. Dehydration is more coming from the inside. Like yeah. those tish, those tissues deep down just don't have the moisture to yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, Stress as well, right? I think stress is really bad for the skin. Yeah, I know when I'm stressed right. and, and and sleep. I think that's super important too. Yeah, I think you can see all of these things when somebody lies yeah. on the. Tr I mean, how how do you sort of? I guess how do you know what the first steps are that you have to take with somebody's skin? Are you reading all of these signs? Yeah, and I think you know it's like Rose saying, you always have to treat the client not with respect, but not patronize them yeah, and definitely. give them programs that's just realistic instead yeah. of like you need to do this and you need to do that and you can't do this like you just have to mm. you know give them a little bit of advice without being patronized and, and I feel like without um making them feel worse about themselves yeah, as well exactly. I've sat in so yeah. many clinics when people go okay you need to have some old therapy and you need a deep cleaning facial and then you need this and we need to sort your pores out and and you just you sit there yeah, thinking like oh my god awful. I thought my skin was okay yeah 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 <laughs> it's true right it's true and and I hope that we are never like that. I'm very strict yeah. with my team. I mean, you can see actually there's no products around because we want people to come in and have a treatment and not feel like they're being sold, sold, mm, sold. Exactly. I'm the worst seller in the world. Like, <laughs> all of my clients walk out with zero product. I know, they're, they're so beautiful. They look like sculptures in the cupboards. You don't think you can take them. the team like, yeah, Teresa like, said that these things. And <laughs> yeah, but you know, you want to make people feel welcome and comfortable and not I agree. overselling them. And, and I actually think it's quite refreshing not to have products shoved yeah. down your throat. Yeah. There's yeah. always, a, if you it's go to awful. a spa and they always break off for five minutes and they leave you sort of having a hand massage or something and they're, doing the and they're writing your, yeah. oh, <laughs> and I'm like, I know what's coming and I don't want to buy 15 products from your spa line. I'm sorry. Um, oh gosh, all the training costs that you do as a skin, you know, different brands and stuff. And you actually believe the salesperson selling you that you know that that's not going to work yeah, exactly like, wow yeah that's really gonna help my skin i'm like why am i even i mean yeah. speaking of products is there anything that you know over the holiday period if people can't get in for facials because i hope you're having at least a day or two like away from here in the Cotswolds but what what can we do at home to actually you know if, if we break out if our skin suddenly looks really dehydrated under par are there are there sort of ingredients that you recommend that you know would suit people everyone here um I love a retinol mm. because I think everyone can use a retinol. People might get scared um, if they have rosacea or yeah. if they have some kind of skin condition where it's breaking somewhere with psoriasis mm -hmm. or eggs. And I always think that you can always treat the skin yeah. and not miss out the rest of the face as opposed to, you know, if you have rosacea, it's typically on the cheeks, but the rest of the skin doesn't have rosacea. Yeah, that's so true. sometimes people cancel out a certain thing because they have a problem. Exactly, they think it's not applicable yeah. for me, I can't use that. But you can, you know, it's still good to treat the rest of the skin. So you would just be good for everyone. You just be mindful of the areas where you felt like the skin yeah. was a bit more compromised. So don't use it there but use it everywhere else. Yeah, and still treat yeah. and you know, maybe the neck. 
So I think retinol is a really good product for everyone. It yeah. really brightens the skin up. So, you know, if you are dehydrated, you don't look as dehydrated because of, of the brightening. Definitely. Things. It sort of speeds up that sort yeah, of skin cell turnover. It's a great winter winter product. Yeah. It. yeah. Trying to sort of get rid of that like top sort of dull grey layer yeah. of dead skin 100%. cells. I love wipe some all away. Do you have to build up to it over time though? I mean, you, you have a retinol, one. right? Mine, you don't have to do you. It's, mm -hmm. it's really gentle. I sell so. your products for you now. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I would. I know, I know. Exactly. Um, I'd say every night, and then after a few weeks, every night, and then I've never really had anyone with any any sensitivity from that. Mm -hmm. But as a quick fix over Christmas, I um, I used to have a cryo ball, which is which was great, still is great. You can get them, but not from me. Um, I remember I like, you launching those. Yeah, I really like cool. the, I, I like just literally going hardcore with the, with some ice. Yeah, you have to be careful, you know, because yeah, so it can stick, stick to the skin. Exactly. Right? So How you have do you to avoid put serum? Okay, fine. So use some serum, yeah. and it's pretty torturous, but yeah. I love it. And if you have like a flat piece, yeah. you can just. Roll. Roll. <laughs> I think I have the ball <laughs> languishing in my freezer. Really? Somewhere. Yeah, I, I have yeah. a tiny freezer, so it's we're still not here. We don't sell them. Such a, yeah. But I think you're right, ice is such a good yeah, shape. And got, so nice for that puffiness, like that next like, morning takes it down. Yeah. hangover puffiness. Definitely. Oh, that's such a good idea. And it's cheap um, and easy and free. Not free, but yeah. <laughs> not free. Well, maybe it the ice in your freezer yeah, is. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why, why to you is this whole sort of holistic approach important? I, I suppose sort of bringing in the nutrition, bringing in the aesthetics, the injectables, doing what it is that you, that you do in your sort of treatment room as well. I think, um, I don't think, I know that nutrition is really important for skin, mm. um, really, really important because I think a lot of things um, can be happening from the inside, right, as opposed to what you put on the face. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, you know, people want injectables these mm. days and I think if, you know, kind of give the client what they want as well. So it's great to have yeah. Amy here, Dr. Amy. And um, we'll drop everyone's we've, titles too. We've got, the first no, we've got two Amy's here, so I've got in the habit now of calling a doctor Amy. <laughs> so, Amy so we know which one we're Very talking about. Um, I think you're right though, people are seeking out these treatments and actually far better to sort of give them access to it in a in a safe and efficacious exactly. way where, where also you can still yeah. slightly be OCD and micromanage their journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's true. We, yeah. we sometimes kind of double up, don't we? I'm like, Amy, come in to see yeah. my client. Mm. And then, and we kind of like have Better a little that word than somebody, of them. you know, thinking that they can't talk to you about it and then going off yeah. to some dodgy, you know, yeah. high street clinic and then and they, they see you and you're like, what have you done to your face? <laughs> I know. And then this one's dissolving it and starting again. Oh, God, yeah. exactly. Right. So, so what's, at, at what stage do you then pass patients over to Dr. Amy? Um, I tend to let the client kind of ask me if they mm. want, if I don't say, oh, I think nothing of this, this or if they ask me if. I mean, a lot of people still don't even know that she's here. Yeah. Um, terrible business woman, actually. <laughs> don't tell products. Don't tell them what's going on. <laughs> Need to put a poster of Amy outside. <laughs> don't have a sign outside. I'm just hanging out. <laughs> um, but yeah, if they ask about that, then I explain that we've yeah, got yeah. Amy here. But you do a lot of skin stuff here as well, don't you? So you do a lot of profilo and yeah. skin boosters and mesotherapy and PRP. So not just... Yeah, not, um, not just the toxin. But what I love about Amy is that if she doesn't think the client needs it, mm. she just she will just say it. And, and same with me, I'll be like, I don't think you need that. Or, that's so refreshing that's quite, to him. Yeah, it is. And, and another thing actually, Amy, what you do really well is you do a free um, follow up. Yeah. And that is a good old fashioned way of, you know, if you have Botox, mm. it doesn't matter how good the doctor is, you might just want to tweak or... Yeah. And Amy will go subtle, and then she'd rather tweak two weeks later. Yeah, complimentary. Oh, 100%. That's definitely it's the way to so go. It's important. You do not go in all guns blazing. And now it's like five people in the waiting room, jab, 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 jab. Yeah. Like, it's just like a conveyor belt. Oh, I've belt. seen that. Everyone yeah. with their numbing cream on. And it's such a weird conveyor belt. Yeah, it's a conveyor belt. Yeah. Um, tell me they're, about your. They're, they're earning money though. We're not yeah, well. <laughs> I guess you no. win some, you lose some. But, it's, it's, but yeah, that's sadly. Um, but, there's, but there's also lots of good 
good things. But no, there's lots of good doctors out there. There really are. You've got one of them yeah. sat on the sofa with you. Um, tell me lastly, last question um, about your new body treatment, because you finally sort of made the foray into body as know, well, it's, which it's, is really exciting. It, it is exciting. It's unusual. I'm enjoying it, actually, because I've yeah. always done skin. but It's um, technology, though, which is obviously, yeah. like, your, your love. And it's the same um, group that I get my lasers from. Yes. So it's um, a laser. It's a 1064 laser, which I know you would know what that means. So it's not fat freezing, and mm -hmm. I think fat freezing had a really bad name when yeah. the whole press thing came story. out. Um, so it's it's working from a laser point of view deep. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, and this is not just from Linda's story, but I have seen it actually a lot of times where the, the um, coal sculpt yes can make it a little bit lumpy because. Yeah. It's freezing. This is you that get area. these like shark bites almost from it yeah, as well, yeah. where you can, I you don't can like physically it. see the applicator. I, I don't like it. Yeah, because it's freezing. I think again, it, it has to be in the right hands, um, yeah. as with all of these devices and true, treatments. True. Um, but sadly, yeah, sometimes you get it in the wrong hands, and yeah. then accidents happen. Yeah. Um, but, but the, your one, so it tightens the skin, it remodels. What does it do? So it's 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 purely for fat. Yeah. So I guess you can model. If you, yeah. It's it's only for stomach, so it's not for any other body oh, really? at the moment. That's interesting. And that's really um, because the laser has to be super flat. There's no you can't let laser line to scape. Yeah, exactly. So you know legs are curved, and so they haven't mm. quite figured the. But I'm sure at some point it's an American company. Um, Huge in America, huge in Israel. It's made in Israel. Most of the yes, as all the laser that. seem to be. But light spreads. It's not. It's it's quite a nice spread. So it's not going to cause that. There's no risk of lumpiness. And so can you have it at this time of year? Like yeah. if if people are going into the sun, is it sort of dangerous in any way? No, or? no okay. you have to like any laser. You would have to be careful after the sun. Yeah, exactly. But before, it would be absolutely fine. So cover so, yourself in your SPF if you do go on the beach. Anyone yeah. who's lucky enough to be leaving this snow. Um, that's super interesting. Congratulations on your first foray into body. It's really cool. Definitely need to try that after Christmas. I think you'll have like, people queuing around the block for that in January. I know, I should be doing body things in January. Yes, definitely. There you go, some, some it's, free marketing advice. It's actually advice. really good. We've seen some really good results with it. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, really good. Great. Well, thank you, Teresa. Thank you. Really wonderful to speak with you. And also, thank, thank you, so you for hosting much. us tonight. You're very well. Um, our second speaker is Dr. Amy Bibby. So uh, she introduced herself, but she is um, yeah, resident aesthetic doctor here. You do toxin, you do dermal fillers, profilo, a few other skin boosters, probably um, a little bit of everything. Um, and you've been you've been here for fifteen months, did you say? Yes, since last September. Amazing. Yeah, think. yeah. It so, seems like we've been together I forever. Know, it does. It does. It's, it's so, so easy. easy. It's so lovely. Mm -hmm. yeah, so really as lucky. As like the woman to see when we need to sort of take our skin up a notch, how do you devise the best course of treatment for somebody? Again, do you just know by looking at us what our faces need? Or is it a conversation with the patient? It's a conversation because what you think you might need might actually be quite inappropriate and yeah. not give you the best aesthetic results. Yeah. Plus the fact not everyone wants to have filler or Botox they might just want a tiny little thing adjusting. So you've got to somehow marry up what they want, what you want, or what you think they need, and combine it so that they feel really comfortable in your hands and you're just doing the minor adjustments That's in right. all of that. Yeah. So as we, nice. I mean, personally for me, filler is normally the last thing that I would suggest. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Because it's really personal. Yep. You don't want to go to a clinic and be told, well, actually, you need 10 mils of filler in your face. To oh, my God, all of the body. It's, it's just not true. We need to pump it back up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it's a real conversation between the two of us. Yeah. And then also managing expectations is really important. Mm -hmm. You hear the word, like, liquid facelift and things like that. I'm not going to give you a facelift. Exactly. I'm not going to improve. I'm not a surgeon. Yeah, exactly. Lovely. I'm not a surgeon. I'm not going to be able to lift your eye bags or remove these eye bags. That is surgery. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be honest with people about mm -hmm. what you can do and what you can't. Yeah, I think that's such a um, valid point. And really, it's it's just being honest. Do, and you, not do you find crossing. patients coming in with more education now? I mean, maybe they're, they're seeing more on social media, maybe they're seeing more sort of advertisements, and, and they're coming in almost saying, I want this or I need this. Absolutely. Strangely, there's a thing about PRP under the eyes at the moment. I'm being asked, I've really? been asked twice this week to phone people about PRP do under you, the do eyes. Do you do PRP? We do. 
it's but if you know your dark circles under your eyes might be because you've got blood vessels there yeah. it might be that your skin's pigmented and we're not going to massively change that mm. if you've got a tear trough maybe filler can help but is PRP going to dramatically reduce your dark circles probably not every once in a while the media sort of latches onto mm. this sort of holy grail treatment yes. don't they yeah. and then suddenly you're bombarded with yeah exactly questions about PRP under the yeah. eyes so that's what it is so what would you use the PRP for if if, it, if you didn't think it was suitable for under the eyes, what else are you doing with it? So we sort of microneedle it into the skin. So PRP, if you don't know, you take out a sample of your own blood, you spin it, remove the plasma component. Plasma is regener- regenerative, so it's got all your growth factors in. So you put it back into the skin and your skin responds by going, it's sort of like giving skin fertiliser, but it's your own <laughs> skin fertiliser. That's such a good analogy I've never yeah. heard before. So people like it because it's really natural. Yeah. It's using their own resources exactly. rather than using something to borrow. skin fertiliser part. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, whereas something like Profilo or Skin Boosters, you're getting a similar effect, but it's an exogenous, you know, inge- something being injected. Yeah, exactly. So it's more for your natural ladies or men mm. than um, maybe your people who are more comfortable with injectables. And, and is that sort of something that you're doing a lot of at this time of year? Is there a particular treatment that is like flying in the lead up to Christmas, January? Profilo. Really? I think it's the dry skin. So again, for people that don't know, Profilo, Skin Boosters, kind of the same thing. It's injecting small amounts of hyaluronic acid into the dermis that pulls water towards it. It's not a filler, it can't project, it can't volumize. It's like a syrup that seeps underneath your skin, pulls water towards it, so you look really bouncy and dewy. Mm, that's a lovely description. It's a really lovely yeah. treatment, but I always say this, one out of 20 thinks it's a waste of money because they that's don't really see the juice. Yeah. But if you are analytical about your skin, you love skin health, you'll probably love it. But there are different forms of skin booster as well, and I don't know if Profile is the only one you use, but generally speaking, there is normally a skin booster to suit every skin type, exactly. right? You have some that are better for redness, some that are better if you're prone to water retention. Exactly. And what do you do when it comes to the profile? Because I feel like you had the classic five points on the face where you would inject it, but I feel like people are a bit more creative now when it comes to their technique. Yes, so I discovered this by injecting myself in the mirror. So it's really hard. You do five points on each side of the face, eyes down. And I physically couldn't. It's quite painful, Philo. It's it sort a of stings. Stingy. It goes in and you think, this is fine. And then the stinging just the second intensifies. One. Yeah, the second yes. jab. Yes, yes. exactly. And the one, the one very close to, I think, your, your upper lip is... Yeah. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. it's horrid. It's sore. Well, and the ones on the chin. So when I was injecting it, I physically couldn't push the entire dose into each... Um, spot, so I divided each spot into two. So actually, now I tend to do more or less ten on each side. Okay, fine. Because the injection going in isn't the sm- saw bit; it's putting the it's the, it's the, it's it's the, the fluid actually. Yeah. Yeah. What causes exactly. that pain? Why does it? Why does it have that sensation? I think it's the stretch receptors in the skin. Right. And the thing with filler is it's got numbing agent within it. It's got the lidocaine. Yeah. So my filler patients hate Profilo because they much prefer filler. But when you, when you do filler, well, I don't actually know how you do it, but often you do use a cannula as well. So you make yeah. that little hole sort of with your needle, something very sharp, and then you sort of weave. Yes, this. you do. It's a very bizarre sensation if anyone hasn't had it in their face. Um, but you feel something sort of snaking beneath yes. your skin. And, but I wouldn't say it's painful. No. It's just completely bizarre. Whereas and Profilo stings. Profilo stings, yeah. yeah. The way you did it on me, though, with the... Yeah. more jabs less it's better isn't it's it better. it's easier yeah. Mm, yeah um so i'm glad i it was a happy accident having to try and do it on my vanity of injecting myself in the mirror i worked it out i think it's it also a nice foray into i think you're right earlier when you sort of said my friend wants filler as well you know yeah. it's it's about respecting what people's boundaries are when yes. it comes to injectable treatment and i think you know it's important to have these conversations because we do try and break down the stigma around talking about injectables mm-hmm. but at the same time you have to appreciate not everyone wants dermal fillers so something Absolutely. like a skin booster where it's actually working on skin quality and skin health is really valuable at this time absolutely i agree with you and i think for anyone ever embarking on filler you have to be psychologically ready for that yeah it's, it's true. not the kind of thing where you come in and i go oh you should do this 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 and you go and right, let's do it now with a needle. yeah i wouldn't you know 
think about it. Yeah, exactly. What's, what's your philosophy, apart from obviously taking your time, staged treatments, making the patient feel in control? Do you have any other sort of, I suppose, yeah, golden rules when it comes to filler? Yes, I think small stage tweaks, so small, small steps. We're looking for small improvements. You yeah. don't want to look transformed Full overnight. face transformation. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it should be small amounts placed well. Yeah. And because there was this trend, you know, maybe a, a year, two, three years ago, I can't remember now, you know, big volumes. People kept yeah. saying under treating is underwhelming and you know they were using 10, yeah. 12, 14 mil in someone's face. Oh it's it's, it's a bit terrifying. scary. Yeah. But do, do you find even with your sort of more mature patients who maybe do have significant volume loss that anyone ever needs that amount or no, never. That's I don't think I've ever done anything even close, not even a quarter of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, not definitely yeah, not even approaching half that's yeah. for sure. Um, and certainly I wouldn't want to do that in one sitting. I might do that over a year, not yeah. 14 mils, but I might do four, five or six over a year. Mm -hmm. But yeah, people don't need that much. And also there are so many other alternatives. I, I actually think a lot of people are shying away from filler now because they yeah. realise there, there are these other alternatives. There are energy-based devices, there are yes. skin boosters, there's PRP, you know, all of these various things that can also affect change. Absolutely, and I think We've all seen bad filler, and the trick is there is good filler, you just don't notice it, exactly. right? You don't see it walking down the street because yeah. it's so beautifully done. Yeah, so I think we've all been scared by the odd celebrity who's hit the headlines for bad filler, um, and so everyone is looking for an alternative, like maybe a Morpheus 8 sort of device, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so like a microneedling radio frequency yeah. situation. Um, and these things are all on offer, and a Really, it's a combination. You should be choosing sort of a combination of things mm. to improve everything, yeah. and tweak everything. I completely agree. What are your thoughts on collagen stimulating fillers? Because I feel like they're really big, sort of in the industry right now. Yes, there are broadly two types of filler. One's a hyaluronic acid filler. One's a calcium hydroxy appetite filler. Um, there is a company at the moment that's combined the two. That's really new. It's called Harmonica. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, collagen stimulating sort of skincare is great, it works, it does do what it says on the tin. Mm. There are just better versions of it. So, yeah. Radius is quite a um, well known calcium hydroxy appetite filler. So, what is that you, one that you use? Yeah, but we use that on the back of the hands, maybe on a crepey neck, mm -hmm. maybe a very crepey skin. Um, accordion line sort of um, skin on the face and you hyper dilute it down and you can fan it underneath the skin mm -hmm. and it really does a nice collagen um, build. And for the neck that's really nice because it's such a difficult area to treat. Yeah. So hard. <clears throat> yeah, if I had a dollar for every sort of neck query. Um, and that's a really lovely treatment to have but again do it when you're ready it's not yeah. to be forced on you what, what are the chapters of life that you see people coming in really struggling with their skin or is it pretty consistent um it's it's menopause really, really? um because your skin age isn't really it's about it's not really about your chronological mm. age it's about your hormone age when you're a woman mm. sadly mm. as we all know we start losing collagen by one percent a year from being age 20 but when you go into the menopause and you lose estrogen it goes down much, much qu more quickly. Mm -hmm. So I would say menopausal, maybe post-baby, you've had a hell of a time, <laughs> two years of no sleep, etc., etc., and then they want to revamp themselves a little bit. But um, yeah, predominantly I'd say... And getting your hormones, hormones back into balance is really key. I guess, can you see a difference in somebody's skin when you know they're on HRT or when you know their yeah. hormones are in balance? Yes, quite often. Yeah. There's been some really good um, clinical trials and they have shown that skin thickness for a year on oestrogen improves by 30%, collagen's up 7%. Wow. So it does really work. But obviously, you don't want to just do HRT for your skin. You do it if your doctor, your GP, I'm not a GP, says that it's good and you can do it. Yeah, but yes, exactly. it does make a difference. It has sort of so many myriad effects, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, so yeah. Exciting. <laughs> Where's my pump? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do maybe this time of year, talking about the one Christmas party we obviously all have, when you have a patient who wants to look amazing but in very sort of little time and with no downtime? Or is there? Is that I really mean, grail again? 
That's really hard. And uh, it's my worst thing is a bride two weeks before the wedding saying, <laughs> Oh no, two what days before no, the wedding. They do sometimes they'll come like a week before the yeah. like what for injectables? Absolutely. Yeah, just like not. everything. I went in at least like, like six, I think I did like trials, you know, like see how it settled. Oh, I know. Yeah. It, that, a sense but of people are forgetting and they panic at the last second. Yeah, they do. They're like, oh my god, I must what have this day talks now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so like, you have this? No. <laughs> my, if you really want a sort of quick judge, profile is probably as safe as it is. As we discussed <coughs> with Botox, I do always like to see someone. Yeah. Know, 10 days ish afterwards just to tweak it so that it's perfect yeah but i'd say profiler you could do today and get away with looking pretty normal in a couple of days mm. everything Even you else have those big welts on your face immediately afterwards they look worse you, than they are they do and they go down very quickly and if yeah. you've done the 10 points on each side there's less have you had one. that one francesca oh yeah I, I, was, I had it yesterday i'm so delighted that my face isn't puffy for tonight <laughs> yeah. not, you had the lo- extra points versus the five i had it all concentrated in one area where i was told i really needed it which oh, is wow. probably true um but yeah it's, it's yeah. like a bee sting welt afterwards if you yeah. had it as yeah. well yeah. Yeah. it's better when you have more injections yeah, yeah. exactly what well, yeah more, more intense <laughs> so sort of result. No. Lots of injections, so oh, so the welts are smaller. Yeah, yeah the welts so go down much more. Yeah, it's, it's way better. That's yeah. so true. Um, final question: Do you find mm-hmm. that the treatments that you're doing, do, do you see a sort of psychological almost benefit to the patients that that sort of come to you? Does it do anything for their confidence, for their mood? Yes, it does. Absolutely, people feel much better when they've had a bit of a a bit sure. of a zhuzh. Yeah, exactly. But it's really important that you just still aim to look like you. Yeah. And you've got to remember the journey and where you started. And it's so easy. People's brains readjust to their new filler in about six days. I had a lady do lip filler, came in a week later, which was too soon, saying, I need more. And I got up the before and after photos. And I said, are you, do you really think you need more? That's so and good she, that you do the before and after photos for yeah, that reason. She couldn't believe. She said, oh, my God, I have no idea. Yeah. I thought my lips hadn't changed from last week. That is so interesting. I've never heard it's a six-day window, but that actually does make it's perfect sense. It's about that. You it's get very so used to looking weird. in the mirror and just yeah. going, oh, yeah, this is my face. This is my natural bone structure. No, it's not. It's very <laughs> so quick. So, yeah, just remember where you started yeah. and only aim to look still like yourself. You don't want to look 10 years younger. You can probably look about four or five years younger mm. and that's enough. Yeah, agreed. You should be aiming for more than that. Agreed, otherwise it just looks weird. Well, you're into yeah. the overfilling territory then, aren't you? Agreed. Really. Yeah. Amazing, very interesting. I feel like I learned so much from that. Thank you. <laughs> Six days for me to adjust to my Well, that's about, <laughs> what I, that is really what I noticed in my patients. Yeah, no, but the anecdotal evidence is yeah. actually is where it's most interesting often. Thank you, Amy. Pleasure. Um, our <coughs> final speaker is uh, Rosemary Ferguson, mm-hmm. as, as you know. Um, she is probably one of the most sought after nutritionists and naturopaths in London. So really, really excited to be chatting with you. Um, I feel like you're super relevant for this conversation. Um, and actually what I'd love to know is actually what your clients are coming to you at this time of year looking for. Is it, is it Christmas safeguarding? Is it January? Is it a little bit of everything? Well, I think, I mean, with client, it's funny actually because clients come in now thinking about they come in now and at the end of 75% of the appointments we go, well, let's not bother with this until January. <laughs> because, you know, and so Ignore everything I've just yeah, said. We're, we're, do you say, I mean, most people are thinking, I think, about January. They're not, because nutrition is a much slower burn. You know, it yeah. takes, it's, uh, when people come in and they want, you can give someone a quick fix. You know, we all know how you can do a quick fix if you need to drop a few pounds before. That's not really where I work. Though. I work with more chronic d- disease and yeah. illness. So... It, people come in and if they're expecting a quick fix, I was wondering how many years it's taken to get them to get into this. But when, when you say like chronic conditions, what sort of thing are you helping people with? Well, I suppose things like well, chronic, well, not chronic fatigue actually, but just a tr- tired adrenals, um, yeah. things like thyroid, things like. I mean, I do deal with weight issues, but not so much. Mm. Um, <coughs> what else do I do? Hormones. I feel like That's hormones it. is just the, the lay motif that runs through everything mm-hmm. right yeah. now. Everything yeah. is it's exploded at the moment. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the focus it's on menopause, menopause yeah. awareness, it's, it's yeah. amazing that it's become the conversation that it has done. Yeah. Um, but <coughs> what, what about, I mean, you just touched on sort of things like chronic fatigue. I mean, I feel like this time of the year, I always get so run down. Like, you're literally burning the candle at both ends, trying to do everything at night, trying to work during the day. How do you help people strengthen their immunity so that they don't fall sick now, basically? 
Well, I think, um, I mean, it's really boring things. <coughs> no, but the just, boring advice is sometimes the best. We just well, I think there, there are things like sleep is really important. Yeah. I'm so sorry, I've got a cough now. Oh, no. I've been quiet the whole time. <laughs> I'm trying to see water. <coughs> <coughs> you've okay, well, well, got some, I've got some water. Yeah. It's worse, the more you think about it, the worse yeah. it gets. I know, exactly. We can feed you a green juice as well. Yeah, maybe a juice actually. I might just yeah. get, can I grab yeah, a juice? Is that okay? Because it's a bit thicker. Um, so for your immune, I suppose immune is like a 360. Yeah. <coughs> you know, oh, I'm going to do this first. I'm not going to pretend that. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, we've got a walk oh, around some day to interrupt the video. Do you mind? Sorry. There's one minute upstairs. Minutes. 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 Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So is the way you're silent for an hour and then your turn comes and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally joking. Oh, <coughs> sorry. On the subject of getting sick at Christmas, poor yeah. Rosemary. <laughs> no, it's not no, no I, I get it every single year, and it's you know the running nose, it's the stuffy head cold, <coughs> and you go into Christmas feeling like you've just been dug up, and it's terrible. And I think the thing that people do, I tell you what, think what happens around this time of year is that everybody puts all this effort into this three weeks before Christmas. Yeah, it's so true. And it's intense. Mm -hmm. And it's like the to-do list is never ending. And it's almost like everyone's waiting to go <sighs> yeah. at the end of... Uh, it's like you try and see everybody who you possibly, possibly ever met in your life Which is in this there three is weeks. There is tomorrow. There is yeah. always going yeah. to be yeah. tomorrow. My husband says it sometimes. Like, you can just see them in the new year. It doesn't have to be before Christmas. <laughs> exactly. Why is it a big deal? So I think people do that. So you've got stress and no sleep. People start eating food they wouldn't normally eat. Yeah. They're drinking more than they normally drink. And, but I do think sleep's a really big one because people sort of just go into, if you're not sleeping, mm -hmm. you're, not, you're literally not re, you know, renewing the body. Yeah, it's, it's when the body recovers, isn't it? And so it has new things. And, and so I think that's a perfect storm because when your body's stressed and tired and then you're eating crap and yeah. then you're going out drinking, your immune, you know, your body's just going to go, just literally throw everything off in there. <laughs> I've had why, enough. And why, why are you trying? You're staying in for the next two weeks. Or the other thing that happens is that you do get through this time of year because cortisol is really good at suppressing the immune system because it's it's telling your body that you are in, you need to respond really fast. That's what cortisol is That's so true. true. Does. So for a lot of people, uh, the other thing that happens is that they're fine because cortisol is telling your body you cannot get sick now because you're in a really high stress, dangerous yeah. situation. So you can't get sick now, and then come uh, and then after Christmas, they everyone gets sick. Then when they go on holiday, when they take a that break, always happens. You yeah. go on holiday and yeah. you get sick. That's yeah. why because That's your body why. is suddenly let go, and it's like wow. okay, you're on a beach now. You have time. The cortisol has stopped coursing through your veins. Can you wow. buy cortisol? I want some. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How do we get hold of this stuff? Yeah, I think you probably have quite a high cortisol. <laughs> <don't> exactly. <laughs> we need to reduce cortisol, people. Oh, we need to reduce cortisol, but that's um, and I suppose things to stop you getting. Sick. I mean, there are, th there are things that help your resilience, but it depends. If you're already stressed, I mean, I'm a big fan of cold water showers. Are you? But Even at this time yeah, of year? They're really, yeah, they're really good for you. Yes. But they're so amazing because they do cold swimming. I haven't swimming. been to them very much lately, actually. I've been a bit worse. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's, Not right it's, now. It's very it's hard. Cold. I have done it before in this call. Really? My goodness. But I don't, I haven't been in very much this month. But I guess it's like cryotherapy, it does reset the body. Mm -hmm. It's really great for your resilience because it puts your body under something we've watched, we call hermetic stress. And yeah. that hermetic stress, your body, it stresses your body and your body has to move into that. It has to push against it. To, yes, exactly. And, and in doing so, it gains strength. It gets strength. The problem is that if you're very, very stressed already, yes. you're putting more stress on. So yes. if, for people I see, I see a lot of chronically stressed people and so I would always I would tell them to stop intermittent fasting, stop doing cold showers, you know, just because it's creating more, it, you don't need any more stress, you need less. And I guess that's why it has to be a personalised approach, you can't give a blanket rule, everyone intermittent fast, everyone take cold showers, yeah. because for the wrong patient it's obviously going to be detrimental. Yeah, I mean I think, and I think that's when it's a clinical situation, you have to be a bit careful, I mean the cold water shower, hermetic, creating a bit of hermetic stress has, is really useful for people, even if they're a bit tired it might help you, mm. but I, I think you know, but things like cold showers will help your immune system yeah. in normal times. Um, you know, eating lots of vegetables is so boring, but it's so true. Mm -hmm. And you vegetables. mentioned alcohol as something that obviously we all lean on like a crutch in this sort of social season, but what is it actually doing to the body if we, if we do do it in excess? Well, so alcohol, we have to break acetaldehyde down. Yeah. And so we need to, and that takes two phases in the liver to do that. And so... 
we, if we don't have enough of the nutrients that we need for phase one and phase two, or if the alcohol level is so high, it's going to take a while to do that. So one phase unpacks it, the other phase packs it up and ships it out. Yeah. So if you um, if you're drinking, you're just going to well, you're going to feel your body's very busy doing doing yeah, it's like working yeah, time, doing trying to detox. detoxing, and it's not doing very much else. So then you'll feel the next day you'll feel tired. You don't sleep. I love this. I see people all the time. Yeah. Yes, but I need a glass of wine to sleep. And so we slap a monitor on them. I say, all right, let's go and see how that's going. Because what it does is you might be sleeping, but your body's working overtime. I cannot sleep with too much alcohol in my system. 3 a.m. That's because of wine. Everything running around your head. (laughs) What is it? Wine. Wine. Yeah, too much wine. wine. Yeah. But your body doesn't sleep. Your body's working. So then you're feeling exhausted. Yeah, so true. Exhausted. So I mean, I love a drink, and but I think I think people need to know that it's not. It's not going to help, that's for sure. I guess all of these things in moderation a little bit. And, and yeah. you're right, Like we, I think probably we all love a drink, but also it's, it's something that's probably difficult to avoid in the coming weeks as well. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of approaching it mindfully and yeah. I suppose dealing with the hangover the next day. How, yeah. can, we, how can we do that? Well, I, think, I think taking milk thistle, that old, old fashioned Does that actually work? It really is. is oh, yeah, so it's Marin, it's really good, but you have to, it's Before cumulative. You. So go, you can't go... go I'm going to take that now. I'll be fine to run. <laughs> but you, if you take it for, I think it's about a month, so we might have missed the boat this year, but next year, 2023. Double your days quickly. It's really I'll be selling it. <laughs> 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 it's really protective for the liver. So whether you feel better or not, your liver will. Yeah. Um, and then the thing that, I, um, that I've just been reading so much research around it is electrolytes. Are electrolytes? Yes, Are exactly. Electrolytes? So, and it's really interesting because actually, well, because alcohol is a diuretic, so when we drink, you know, there's that adage, you have one drink of alcohol, one drink of water. It's not enough, because when you drink, it's a diuretic, so you pee out more than you take on. Mm-hmm. So even if you have a non glass of water, it's not going to cut it. Whereas if you, so as you pee all that fluid out, you're also peeing out your electrolytes and minerals. So... Um, it seems to be quite a lot of support for taking some electrolytes. So you don't, and it doesn't have you don't have to go and bite. You could just take some, a glass of water with some salt, some decent salt, yeah, and squeeze a lemon and have that before, during, and when you get back in and in the morning. That would be really helpful because dehydration is one of the big factors in your headache. It's one of the big factors in your fatigue. It's just so one true. Of the big factors in that. <gasps> Yeah, <laughs> wake up in the middle of the night. Oh, that's the, water. Water. Yeah. Oh, that's the yeah. worst thing when you wake up. Oh, like, there's no water. And you're dreaming. Oh, yes. And then there's no water. I know. Yeah. You're dreaming of drinking, and then, oh, and then you're like, no, I've got to go. Oh, you've got to get yeah. down yeah. Yeah. Also, it, it impacts the decisions you make the next day, obviously, the yeah. hangover as well. And that's when we do, you know, we can be so healthy in the lead up, and then yeah. too many glasses of wine, and the next day you're eating all sorts of things that you never normally would. Yeah. yeah. Well, your body's really, I mean, the body is amazing. It's really finely tuned to sit within this. The homeostatic, homeostatic, homeostatic thing. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> what a doctor. <laughs> She's a real doctor. And then, and 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 so every time when you are hungover, your body's, your blood sugar's on the floor. Yeah. You're dehydrated. You're tired, and so your body's literally freaking out, going, "We have to get back into balance, and we need to do it really fast." So that really will push those cravings to eat yeah. to pick up the high source sugar, yeah. high calorie, high fat. Is there anything we should be eating the day after? Yes. That's not a fryer. Do you know what a fryer actually is not the worst thing to have. Really? Anything fried is not fantastic, but if you had scrambled eggs with some avocado yeah. and even if you had a sausage like a decent sausage. A it's, it's, fry up. it's protein, it's good fat, it's going to keep you full, it's going to help balance your blood sugar levels. Yeah. Better. It's going to take a bit longer. Then having a Coca Cola and a Coca-Cola. yes, is, is that just yeah. like an old wives' tale? Yeah. Coca Cola. Coca Cola is just on the end. It's just it just literally your blood sugar's on the floor. You take Coca Cola, your body gets a big fat slap, yeah. and it goes soaring <laughs> through the roof, and then that sets you off the whole day like that. Or just it's, another glass of wine, which I've heard so. Oh, just no. start drinking yeah. again. I'll get to it. Have a glass of wine. The hairy the dog does actually work for the mood because it's yeah, the so GABA true. receptors off. But for the body, no, not so much. So what, what does food and alcohol do sort of psychologically to us? Does it have an impact on <laughs> mood, energy, these sorts of things from, from what you see in your clinic? Well, well the fact that we're mostly, well, mostly 55% bacteria, so what we put in our, our mouth, bodies, our bodies, oh, wow. we have more bacteria than humans. Oh. 
Wow. Okay. Do you have that? Oh, it's no. Nice. Like Not yeah, a new fact are. I've learned tonight. Yeah, fifty-five percent bacteria in. Yeah. Wow. And so, what we feed those bacteria, or what how, how well we feed them, is how well they look after us, yeah. pretty much. So uh, when, when people talk about the microbiome and the gut, they're talking about the microbiome is the bacteria colony. Mm-hmm. And so if you feed it crap, you're going to feel rubbish. It's so true. And, and then you think about the link between the gut and the brain axis and the vagus nerve, which sends signals from the gut to the brain. Mm-hmm. If you're sending happy food, like literally food that makes the bacteria thrive, that makes your body operate really well, I'm not, you don't have to be perfect pants all the time, but just food that is actually a good fuel. Like yeah. If you think of it like fuel. I, I guess food ultimately is sustenance for us. That, that is all it is. That means yeah. it, it, it comes with its fuel. Perfect <laughs> pants. Perfect pants. Perfect pants. Really perfect pants. I know I like that as well. <laughs> um, then it really, if we're fueling our bodies well, then the body will be happier and in turn the brain will be happier. It's yeah, really, it's true. We make. 90% of our serotonin in our gut. Yeah, it's true. The stomach yeah. is the root of all the of it. The stomach is the root of all of it, you know. And actually, this is where things are actually talking about good mood, um, which is really important this time because people mm-hmm. really struggle. Um, that's when things like cold showers are really good because a cold shower, cold water has been shown to increase dopamine. Oh, really? Yeah. Because dopamine is a, dopamine's a, a reward. And it used to be, we used to get reward, that re- re- reward release uh, hormone when, for really small things. Now it has to be big, big. Yeah, but, so you know, true. And actually having it, something as small as a cold shower can stimulate dopamine and it stays there for, for a few hours, the dopamine level. So much cheaper than buying a handbag. Much cheaper than buying a handbag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> She's I'm just thinking like about the reward thing that you were yeah, talking yeah. about. Yeah. Let's go. Um, Mm-hmm. What about with um, so with Christmas? You know, people going into or you know, however you celebrate over these next few weeks, the the sort of constant influx of food and snacks and like, is there any way that we can sort of um, prevent that self sabotage happening so that we aren't all completely sort of on the ground come January? Because it's a hard period of time and there's not very much to distract you from it. I know, and also it is just as I said, I think everyone just went. I do it. You just ramp up to the end, and, you're yeah. like, and then you just go. Phew. Yeah, exactly. Celebrate. It's um, fun for one day, but by day seven you're a bit. Right. And also, you don't you have a good it. time. Yeah, exactly. I don't end up having a good time, and yeah. that was a big thing for me one day. I was like. I think I'm having a good time because I'm like just drinking and eating and I was like but actually I'm not I actually don't want this I feel terrible yeah, exactly and I'm not having a great time so um, so what I my rules of thumb that I use are I try not to snack the food is good there's food everywhere it's so true um, so I try not to snack and I try to eat so this is where I'd say a, a, when you should be eating three meals a day yeah because I think trying to implement anything more restrictive than that is where the problem happens because then you're hungry and then you eat whatever yeah that's so true so I think I would eat three meals a day if you can have one as a soup Mm -hmm. you know so you have sort of one and that's what I think that's what I would aim for and I tell you what the other thing I don't do is I stop doing exercise you stopped doing it. Stopped doing Christmas. Christmas. I'm like, I just literally sit on the sofa, you know, for years. Yeah, I just no, sit I agree. On because I think I thought well, that's same. what's great for me. That's yeah. what. And actually, now I'm, I just you just have to remind yourself. It actually, it makes you feel good. It doesn't make mm. you feel good. Do yeah, exactly. It's about the endorphins. And, yeah. So getting out, get, doing a bit of exercise, three three meals a day, no snacking. Yeah. That's what Can I would say. Can you say what? If if you are drinking over Christmas, do you believe that say a tequila soda? Obviously, it's not, you, you know it's not as much sugar. Would that be better than a big glass of red than, wine than yeah. drinking wine because of the sugar? And God, I was listening to, was listening to a, um, a lecture about this, and the worst alcohol is whiskey. Really? Best, with, yeah, those brown, wow. or the, the dark brown spirits, spirits yeah. because of the tannins in them. Yeah, it's and the same as a red wine, I suppose. It's a red really wine quite low down that list. Oh, actually, wow. and the best one. It was not vodka, it was something else, Gym. but vodka was quite high up the list. Yeah. So and the clear tequila. spirits, well, tequila is the sense of tequila you get, I suppose, but the clear yeah. spirits were highest. I mean, I think I think the problem with the, the it, then you have to look at the alcohol level. So if you're going to drink, mm. you know, if you're going yeah. to drink yeah. a lot of tequila yeah. compared to a few glasses of red wine, then no, tequila is not better. Intra- yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, because my favourite scent versus my favourite mm. question is. How do I not get a hangover or drink less? Yeah, <laughs> it's not rocket science, guys. <laughs> I love it. It's one of, I get asked it a lot, and I'm, 
Maybe it's because people know I've got quite a few hangouts. Everyone wants that silver bullet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Magic yeah. bullet. Like, yeah. Tell me like the thing that I've oh, never heard like, before. What can I drink tonight? Magic like, trick. Oh, um, you mentioned yeah. intermittent fasting as well. Is yeah. that is that a good thing for us to be thinking about over Christmas? Or is, is there too much going on, quite frankly? I think, well, that's what I mean. Is I think actually putting any restrictive plan on that you feel if you don't do it, you're failing. Yeah. <coughs> is not a good idea. So the Great. good thing about intermittent fasting is that um, what well, we know that 12 12 so 12 hours but 12 hours clear so you know so you have literally 12 hours of ingesting anything that has a calorific, a calorific value that is very very effective so but know, that's including your sleep as well so that's if you sleep for seven sleep. hours actually mm-hmm. you just have to exactly find so you another just have to and you know and if you're going for a late dinner then you start breakfast later but it's yeah. just and it's not about I think people think that intermittent fasting is about restricting your food intake. It's not. It's about letting your bacteria rest. That is the main reason. Exactly. That's letting the body doing. just relax for a bit because it's not constantly churning. It's yeah. digestion around. Yeah, because and... digestion takes up 50% of our energy every day. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, so I think, so if you focus on 12-12, then you can have your brunch and then you can have your late dinner. Yeah. It's all in the 12 hours. Yeah. And otherwise, if someday you wake up and you manage, and your eating window is slightly smaller, like eight hours, that's great. But mm-hmm. I think to put that pressure on when there are people popping in or you're going out or, you know, whatever it is, yeah. I think is a mistake. It's, um, you know, and I think it's more, you can enjoy it and feel better on the other side if you think more along 12-12. Yeah, that's a really good piece of advice. Um, what was my last question for you? Oh yes, um, the functional medicine specialism, where does that fit into this sort of whole nutritional journey that somebody does with you? So, um, well I suppose it's a nutri- the nutrition that I did was very holistic anyway, it's quite a holistic nutrition because you have to look at the drivers, what's driving your client to yeah. be along well. And then I suppose after about seven years of doing nutrition, eight years of doing nutrition, I wanted to know more. So I went to the Institute of Functional Medicine in America and did it there. Yeah. And it's just an extension, but it's a much deeper dive into it's three years of, I mean, and you're working mostly with doctors actually, so I thought, well, well out of my depth. But yeah, they were sure very interesting actually, because I did nutrition, I had a very holistic point of view anyway, and would look, but then functional medicine is much more um, investigative. So yeah. If somebody, which is quite fun, you have to really sort of deep dive into the patient. Re- yeah, find. and I want to know where you live. I want to know if you've got a speck mold next to you. I want to know what your sheets oh, are. What next to you? Mold, you know. Okay. So, because if mold is, yeah. you know, really massive thing. I had one client who was really, really, really unwell, and then I found out she had mold. I was like, you need to get rid of that. Oh, wow. I mean, they, you know, those are really nice when you get a case like that. Yeah. But, so it's really it's sort of like joining those dots, isn't yeah. it? And like trying to understand everything. the bigger picture and what's causing it. And it's very specific to that person. So someone can present with exactly the same symptoms, but if you know they've got entirely different circumstances, yeah. and you have to deal with those. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very interesting. I need to. I need to see all of you. I feel like come the new year, <laughs> new year, new me. Um, well, thank you so much, ladies. I think that wraps up tonight's discussion and. Um, yeah, I think it's been really, really interesting. So I don't feel like, as much as you've all sort of emphasised this uh, sort of very mindful, staged, careful approach, I don't feel like anyone has made any hard and fast rules about what you should or shouldn't be doing. And I mean, Rosemary, you touched on this. It's really important because at this time of year, it's it's about celebration and parties and indulgence. But it's also it's sometimes a tough time for people as well, yeah. and we don't always feel like the best versions of ourselves. So. I guess there has to also be an element of kindness that comes through, you know, to our skin and to our bodies yeah. and to our guts and, and whatnot. Um, and yet, yeah, not just right now, not just at Christmas, but hopefully for the entire year. Yeah. Um, I think if we have any questions, do do throw up your hand if you have a question for anyone on our panel. Um, if not, I appreciate not everyone's put their hand up in front of everyone. Um, I'm sure we'll all be around for a few moments afterwards. But were there any questions before we? Oh yes, maybe. Um, Regarding retinol, would you say you should use it all year round, or should you have maybe like a month's gap or something like that, or is it safe to um, use consistently? I think it's safe to use. Um, if you are going on holiday out in, in like really harsh sun, um, I would probably not use it at that time if you're going to be out, you know, in the sea and on the beach, I'd probably back off. But you can, you know, some people stop using it for the whole of summer, and I don't think that's necessary if you're really careful with SPF, um, you know, a high SPF 50, and you're not um, specifically sunbathing, I don't think you should be too scared. Um, but if, 
you know, if you're going to go on holiday for the whole of the summer, you're going to be in sun, even if you're not sunbathing, I'd probably back off a little bit and use something like a lactic acid that's just still kind of resurfacing the skin and brightening, but not, not as strong. And, and actually, it depends what strength as well. I think a lot of people use really high levels. Retinol, yeah. yeah, and, and I just don't, their skin yeah, the it's just, I don't think it's necessary. I think low retinol, more regularly and not irritating the skin versus doing a really strong one, you get redness, you get irritation, and it puts you off, you don't use it anyway. So, so what's true. So you might as well just use a low one that you can tolerate. And you could use that with the lactic acid exfoliator as well. So I probably would wouldn't. Would you stick to one? I would do one or the other. So okay. I have actually a lactic and a retinol, and I wouldn't mm -hmm. say use them both because I don't think it's necessary. I think the retinol will outweigh the lactic in terms of what it can do. Okay. Um, so it could be, so I say to clients, someone that really doesn't want to use a retinol, lactic acid is really good. Um, and if it's you in, you know, maybe summer you could use lactic acids because it's less, um, it's very gentle. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And is it SPF 50 every day in your book? I think yes, just because if you just get in the habit of using it, mm -hmm. then you just use it. Like, I don't think about it, I don't yeah, think I need so to put true. my SPF on. Yeah. I use it as my moisturizer. Yeah. So I don't yeah, think. Yeah, I'm the same actually. Yeah, it's a serum, then an SPF. Yeah, I don't think you need a moisturizer. Yeah. Yeah. So just use your SPF as your moisturiser. So true. And then it's just your routine. Otherwise yeah. you are sort of thinking about down it. Your skin will me things. Yeah, I don't think you need, I'm not into layering product, I'm not yeah, into layering products. I use like three, but I'm also very lazy. You've um, got best skin. <laughs> best, best skin. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. From, from you. It's amazing. Nice. Was there a lady uh, with a question? Oh, sorry. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> Was there another question? This lady in the front. Um, Um, I think massage is great and you can really, really kind of sculpt and make a difference to someone's face, but it's sadly temporary because, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of stimulating the, the blood flow and, and kind of, you can sculpt the massage actually, I, I've done it on people before, I've done it on myself, but, you know, it will kind of go back down to how it was maybe even the day after. Um, it won't do any, you any harm, but I'm not a big fan of really heavy massage really often because it yeah I think it is stretching the skin a little bit oh really but I don't want some people love that like that. really deep yeah sort of and, I, and I, I love it I love yeah. it and I think to do it every so often you know as your regular facial every month yeah. but to be dragging your skin around a mm. lot is I think it can stretch Probably long, long term. Yeah. It's, that's really interesting. Yeah. You know when you, you know, all this kind of like, but it's, it's not going to do you any harm unless you're doing it a lot, so it, mm. it's, it would be hard Do you use to like get. tools and stuff? I mean, yeah. you use like cryo balls, so I guess. Um, or, is, or is like just the hands enough? Hands, it's, it's quite hard to do it on yourself actually because, you know, us from behind are pulling up. That's so it's true. It's kind of hard me, to, <coughs> the tools are really helpful because, yeah you have that as something hard in your hand that you can push up. That's so true. Whereas when you're trying to do it with your hands, your fingers hurt and you kind of can't. Yeah. But, um, what, yeah, what the facial massage is good, you know, it's stimulating. Them. What do facial exercises and massage do from a sort of injectable point of view? Uh, if you were having injectables, I'd say avoid extensive facial massage yeah, for a couple a of weeks lot. afterwards. Yeah. It can um, sort of move, like if you've yeah, had toxic, you can move it into the wrong muscle. Exactly, and just it. let it all settle. Filler takes two weeks to settle anyway, so I wouldn't advocate doing it in those two weeks. I just have to say, I tried a new device recently um, that sort of causes your facial muscles to contract over and over and over mm -hmm. again. And I swear my Botox only lasted half as long oh, as it really? Really? did. So I think it's a little bit of yeah. everything, right? Yeah. Probably not going, like you said, too like, hardcore yeah. with the You want to see all these like... I was like, what do you mean I can frown again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so, so horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Which one was it? I would be interested. It's called M Face. M. She's in the bracket. It's like M Sculpt, but for the yeah, face. Rita, Rita yes, Rita's is just Rita's 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 one. There's, there's, I think there's about four or five of them in London now. Yeah. And it is an amazing treatment. And if you don't want to have injectables, I totally get it. But is again, it painful? No, it's not at all painful. No? It's a very bizarre sensation. It feels like, almost like somebody's pulling your hair like back off your sort no, of scalp. Weird. Um, and your forehead just goes up and down, and your cheeks go up and down, and your jaw goes up and down. It's really fun. I'll show you a video later. And do you see the difference? <laughs> Um, I think if you do a course of four, yes, everything looks sort of lifted. Lighter. But like I said, on the forehead, for me, I felt like my toxin wore off oh, wow. four, weeks, four weeks later. Um, so I, I think it's about the timing that you do yeah. this. Probably I should have done that treatment and then have my toxin. Yeah. And I would yeah. have been 
Yes. Yeah. Ah, interesting. The things you learn. <laughs> um, was there another question somewhere? This lady here. Don't let the skein with massage though. <laughs> if you have sensitive skin when applying retinol, would you recommend putting cream before or after? So treatment, so retinol is a treatment, so you would always treat the skin after you've cleaned it. So that's the easiest way to remember anything, whether it's vitamin C or retinol or lactic acid or any acid. Um, so to answer your question, sorry, it would be before a cream. Um, again, I don't, massive like layering products, depending on what retinol you have, you don't always need a cream afterwards. So it depends, you know, everyone's different if they want, if they're dry or... But generally, when you get into retinol, your skin shouldn't be drying out um, anyway. So. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, there's a lot at the moment that I've been reading about uh, skin cycling. Skin cycling? Yes. Yeah, so I've heard it all. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> right. This yeah. came up with another tool for you. Skin laundry. Yeah, yeah. skin... What um, is that? I think it's um, having different products that you're using at different times. For your, like, for your cycle. Exactly. Is that right? so yeah, exactly. Or, I mean, it's, it's kind of having like a schedule where one day you'll exfoliate, there'll be, you know, maybe three days out of the week that you'll be using retinol. Uh, one day maybe you won't be using anything. And it's almost having like an agenda for the, or like a schedule, like yeah. you know, you're working out, yeah. you're doing yoga and boxing. And, you know, different days. I guess it's being very mindful of what's, what your body is going through yeah, as well. Yeah, I, mean, I haven't tried it. Uh, yeah. It did uh, come up in another talk we did oh, actually yeah. a, few, a few months back. Write it down, let's have a little yeah. research. It's going to we've, been, we've been reading about it a lot and you know, just hearing, you know, different doctors and yeah. sort of facial experts, you know, in, the, in different, you know, geographical parts of the world having different opinions on it. So I was wondering. Yeah. Okay. I've not heard, but I'm going to research. I personally think that skincare should be relatively simple. I think mm, everyone is just overcomplicating the skincare routine and overthinking it, and it's a lot to do with what we've been talking about. So whether it's diet or sleep or stress um, is a big factor, and it's about finding the product that suits you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes sticking to that product, you know, this whole like having to change it all the time. If you find a product that suits you and you're getting a good result and your skin's not dry or dehydrated or irritated, then why? keep changing it and using too many different brands you know I've not me personally but I formulated my own products so I've worked with the chemists and the scientists to do the products and I always think that when you're using a lactic acid from one person and then a cleanser from another and a retinol from another and those products might not actually sit chemically well together so it can become irritating and you know you talk about um, breaking down the skin barrier so there is logic to actually finding yeah, that just, brand just that suits you and it. trying to yeah yeah and it's not to say that you can't mix brands 100 i i yeah. use neostrata as a serum because i don't have a serum but yeah. um i think it should be relatively simple i think treatments mm -hmm. and lifestyle and everything else is really the kind of basics of skin. And I guess and what, going back to what Rosemary said as well about what it was at 60% bacteria, 55% yeah. mm. bacteria, like, you know, when you think of your skin microbiome and you don't want to be chopping and changing all the time. So yeah. I guess you are having, a, a, you're causing Stressing a, a lot out, of stress right? yeah. on, on that yeah. skin yeah. and every time it's having to recover. Yeah. yeah, and I think, I just think it's really confusing and it really shouldn't be, you yeah. know, a retinol does this and and, and acid, and I think a lot so of people's mixing the it? yeah, it's terrible. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's annoying actually. I find mm. it really annoying, and people just getting ripped off yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, and acids yeah, don't me mess with too many acids mm. because oh my god, I've seen that go so wrong. Just stick to it. Yeah. Just nice and you know, mandelic or lactic, but too much glycolic and salicylic dries it out. Apparently and this happened a lot over lockdown. Everyone oh, was really oh, taking yeah. their skin into their own hands and yeah, applying yeah, all yeah. these acids and like burning everything off yeah. the Yeah, and, not, and, and definitely, you know, stripping the, the skin the barrier, barrier down. Yeah, and, it's, yeah. and then it's quite hard to, you know, your skin becomes vulnerable and you can then get problems with the skin, whether it's a little bit of dermatitis or... Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you know, a lot actually... It's I've heard so many people getting this periocular dermatitis yeah. at the moment. And I was actually sometimes thinking... The, um, that's really interesting, Fran. The vaccine of COVID, yes, or, yeah. but you're right. Everyone was just over treating themselves at home. Maybe it's the yeah. over treating. Maybe it's. I think yeah. it's just like the perfect storm, like you said, mm -hmm. like just everything all yeah. coming together. Yeah. yeah. Were there any more questions, lady in the front? You said about keeping your skincare routine simple. What is it that you recommend then, and how would you change it to anything? 
So, so my, I'll tell you my personal skincare routine. Um, I think I'm a little bit lazy actually with treatments at the moment myself. I should be doing more, but I, if you are wearing SPF, I mean, hopefully everyone's wearing SPF. So I, I think it's important to cleanse twice at night. I'm not into this. You really need to cleanse once. And if you cleanse twice, it's stripping um, and damaging the skin barrier. I think that's absolute rubbish because if I cleanse someone's skin, if I cleanse my own skin, even if you haven't got loads of makeup, it's very rare that you can get a clean pad or whatever you wipe your skin mm -hmm. afterwards after one cleanse. So I think it's important to do two. Um, and then depending if you're on your retinol or if you're on an acid or if you're on nothing, I would use your treatment next. So I, I'm not being very good at the moment. I generally use a retinol and I'm not using it at the moment and I can tell. So I would use my retinol next and then serum and that's, that's it. So I don't use moisturizer ever. Um, and then morning, you do only need to cleanse once because you're just washing off the creams. Your skin's clean, unless you've got a really dirty pillow. Sorry, I've got a really bad, bad sense of humor. Um, and so cleanse, sorry, cleanse once in the morning and then serum. She's not going to do any treatment. Or if you're using vitamin C, um, serum and then your SPF. So I use my SPF as my moisturizer. And, 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 and that's all it should be. It's like, so weird when you think that we always really do cleanse and tone and moisturise, yeah. and now we all do yeah. like cleanse a serum SPF. Yeah. So where was the SPF like yeah. 20 years yeah. ago? It's that's crazy, why is it so late? Yeah. Yeah. And you should have totally like, turned that into the like like next three yeah. steps, yeah. shouldn't yeah. 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 It's not. It's not necessary, and I think to mix all those products together, yeah. It's just, just a bit, but it comes off on your skin. Like, I did it the other day. I had this amazing sounding like HA serum that was like super thick. It came in like a little syringe applicator and I like laid it on top. And then all day my husband was going to me, your skin is flaking. Oh, oh, and it, it did just like, it's, it's just so nice. Like, yeah. yeah. It's loads yeah. of products. Yeah. Yeah. Another one to, to give a tip actually for anyone that's breaking out is um, a strong. No, I'm not dedicated, a strong um, vit specific, specific vitamin C. So yeah. if vitamin C is in a product, great. I think vitamin C is really good for the skin, even better internally. Um, Why is it good for breakouts? But when it's, it's no, it's, it's sometimes bad for breakouts. So I can generally tell, oh. and in fact, I can't generally, I can always tell when someone's using C for Ulic. And I would never <laughs> say this on social media or anything. So if anyone's do quote yeah I wouldn't quote because I would never disrespect another brand yeah. but I can always but see but it's, it's such like a household name for vitamin yeah. C serum isn't and it, it? And it's it probably one of the biggest vitamin C sellers in the world yeah. um, and I personally don't like it at all because mm. you can see it's dark I don't know if you've seen it but it's really dark it stains it stains my hands it stains and you can see it's it orange. Um, pigmented and that's fine mm. because you know I'm looking under a mag lamp no one can see that but if you yeah. break out it's mm. kind of clogging the pores and you can see it and it's something to stay away from if you break out. That is so interesting. Do you yeah. have another vitamin C serum that you think? I like is vitamin C that's a stable, you know, if it's stabilized yeah. in, in a product versus yeah. a standalone vitamin C. Okay, fine. So you it's can even take your vitamin C out of your set, ladies, because <laughs> you don't think it's <laughs> necessary. Really. So there's, there's a few, we, we sell one called um, Neostrata Tritherapy and it has I've all that. Like, it's nice. great. It's really, I'm actually working on a serum myself and vitamin C is in there, but I can't believe you don't have a serum. Like, oh. I know, I'm desperate. It's it's been in the making for about seventy years. So so much in, into yeah. a serum because it has to do so many wonderful I know, things. I know, I know. And so it's the powerhouse. But I think it. a lot of people's getting um, oversold on vitamin C, and mm. it's not. That's really interesting. It's not, it's not that it's not the be all and end all, but like there's um, always a new sexy ingredient or yeah, even new, just yeah, a, yeah. an ingredient that suddenly everyone is like but so excited about. Retinol and SPF, about. just like two simple things. Yeah, so like, but what about brighten the skin and, and protect your skin? Yeah, this hyaluronic is true. acid. I just mean it's like another sexy one. Though. It's, it's like another sexy one. Yeah. Loaded. It's, it's good. It, yeah. But it's I right. would say, <laughs> like, if you have good skin and your skin looks really healthy, no one's going to notice your wrinkle or your fold. Yeah. So yeah. before you come and see me, just try and at least have good skin. Get yeah, help I thought you were going to say, yeah. I would just say yeah, that just to inject it. Don't yeah. bother with yeah. the syrup. Sometimes you see, I'm sorry to say this, but sometimes you see someone completely frozen, full of filler, yeah. full of pigmentation and veins and just, yeah. 
Exactly. And, and it's, like, actually if you have a good skin, skin yeah. yeah. You get away with murder if you've got totally. good skin. Totally. Yeah. You know, it's a really old saying of mine, but if you have identical twins and one has Botox and fillers and no skin treatments, yeah. and, and you studies, have someone yeah. Yeah, that the opposite, basically. So you have someone with brilliant skin and loads of lines, and no fillers, no Botox, you can guarantee that person will look younger than yeah. the one that's made up. So, so if true. you think about the hallmark of youth, it's dewy, slightly plump, glowing skin. Mm-hmm. This yeah. word glow yeah. that we keep on saying. It's healthy. It's not not being able to move your forehead. Yeah, and yeah. it doesn't make you look younger, no. does it? So t- alongside, if you don't want to do it first, you do get your skin up to health. Yeah. yeah. You want to have yeah. it nice and dewy. Yeah. I think people are just stressing out about the skin too much. Do you think it's like a silver bullet? That's what I want. Everyone mm. wants a silver bullet in my clinic, and I suppose yeah. that's the same with yeah. skin. It's like, yeah. I think sadly, there is no be all and end all to yeah. any single problem, no. and that's no. why it's so important to have like all three of you talking about this here mm. because it goes to show it's not just your skin, yeah. it's not and just no your gestures, it's not just your gut. Like, you can't yeah. get that, but you know, no, of course you, not. You have pretty perfect skin, <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing. A lot of makeup um, today. It's hard to get, you know, I've been doing skin for 25 years and I've got, got perfect skin. I could have better skin, to be fair. I don't treat myself as much as I should, but, mm-hmm. you know, I'm getting some little acne breakouts because my hormones are not great. So yeah. it's hard so many to, impact on I think it. everyone's just really hard on themselves. Yeah. And you talking about double cleansing. I'm lucky if I even cleanse my face and before I fall into bed. I was like, double cleansing, can start. Yeah. But, you know, don't get scared by all these... I think there's just a lot on social media and, in, and sadly it's bad education yeah, there's exactly. a lot of good but there's a lot of bad as well yeah, I, don't, I couldn't agree more. double cleanse your skin because it's going to it's just mm. it's just, just like understand. calm down just <laughs> calm down like, it's stop the hysteria it's just yeah, yeah. Um, are there any more questions in the audience oh this lady yeah hi what would you say about the key supplements that you should be taking to like better your skin for skin specifically, well, I tell you what, yeah, I think with skin is so vitamin, the reason vitamin C is really good is because it's antioxidant, but you can get that from berries and multicolored fruits and vegetables. Um, I think fats are really good, so taking a good omega 3 to mm. reduce inflammation, but good, um, good fatty foods like avocados are really good because our cells are made up of a fat layer. So if we have, if that's in good nick and it's holding good shape, it's going to look better. Um, it's hard, supplement wise it's really hard because there's so many of them, so I'd, well, I'm giving you food, I, mean, I know you asked supplements and now I'm giving you food, but um, oh, supplements, um, okay I would, take a, I would take an antioxidant complex, I would take, I would take something anti-inflammatory because often if people have got very red skin it's inflammation so that would be like a turmeric or some omega 3. Um, what about things like zinc or selenium? I always oh, yeah, you can take some zinc. Yeah. Zinc would be if you're breaking out, if you've got lots okay. of breakouts. Zinc is a really mm-hmm. is your wound healing. Is I mean, it does yeah. load to Yeah. But zinc is so, 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 but then it's in a multi mineral. Yeah, that's true. Take. So yeah. multi minerals are good. It will sort your hangover out and it will. <laughs> <laughs> this um, is the answer I need. Just one thing that does great, everything. Yeah. Um, but in general, I think you know hydration is really, it's really key. Hydration, eating it all really high fibre and a multicolour because all those tiny colour, all those coloured fruits and vegetables have different mm. phytonutrients in them which are utterly, absolutely crucial. I also think while we're talking about food and skin is taking, if you've got troubled skin I, and you know breakouts, um, dairy is really inflammatory and really irritating to, you know, so perhaps thinking yeah. about cutting that out. Cause, mm-hmm. yeah. do, you, do you see that making a difference on client's skin when they do cut out the dairy? Yeah, I mean, I usually take it out for things like eczema and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so it's like more, more, more medical based, mm. or you know, not medical, but you know, more sort of less aesthetic skin. Because it's just what leads to inflammation that sort of it's results really in all these chronic got conditions. Very difficult proteins in it, and though, I mean, it's the same. Gluten has very. The reason gluten has such a bad name is because of the proteins. It's very difficult mm. for the body to break down. But as you should be, you should be able to cope with all of it. Your gut should be able to cope with all of it, but it gets compromised through stress through pollution in the air, through antibiotics, through, you know, through so many things. And then, um, but if somebody has a skin issue, then I would take out day because it just does, yeah. it's really inflames. Yeah. Um, and it's a really easy thing to just take it out, see what happens. Yeah, exactly. And if it helps, great. If it doesn't, then go back on it. Yeah. yeah. Good advice. And, and to add to that, actually, Rose, um, it doesn't mean to say you can't have it forever, right? 
you know, some people think that they can never have it again. It's yeah. sometimes people mm. just need a break and kind of yeah. let things yeah, 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 you reintroduce yeah. foods well, after a yeah. while. Yeah, if your gut sort of gets a chance to calm down. Exactly, now, yeah. Then, I mean, we work, I work quite a lot on the gut and like making sure it's working, you know, and helping the gut layer, which is actually where collagen, which is good for the skin. But collagen is really good for the gut. And when your gut's working better, you will look better. Mm, that's so true. So, yeah, so that's where I use. So, yeah, so once you get the, the gut working better, you can put it back in and hopefully it'll be able to process the more yeah. Yeah. proteins. Yeah. I don't I think excluding food groups is really. Good. It's hard. You're, you're, well, you're, trying, you're getting into difficult water, I think, with. Bit too restricting and yeah, Agreed. yeah. If, if you're cutting out dairy, rest, what, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If if you are cutting out dairy, uh, what what substitute? Like out of all the milks, like what what is best from a nutritional point? Well, also dairy in in my food is refers to cow's milk. Yeah. So mm. sheep and goats might. So, yeah, that's true. So you can those could still be an option for you. Um, the, the, the plant milk. It's, it's such a debate, it's I feel such like. a debate. Soy versus oat versus whatever. Well, soy is, is definitely, I mean, that's easy. Soy, absolutely out. Yeah. Definitely not soy. Um, just pro, and I'm not anti-soy, but processed dairy, soy dairy. It's probably coffee. Just, yeah. Um, I, would say, I, I would say oat, mm. but when you are buying oat milk, you have to be really careful to just get oat and water. Yes. Because most oat milk, and I do mean most of it, has got added sunflower oil. Oh, I mean, really? most of it. Oh so gosh. check your or oat milk oh, because wow. most, my, I literally, I mean, I know I've said it 45 times, but most of them do have oil in them. So Is it your, looking for the percentage of ingredients? Because I heard with yeah, almond milk, you've got to make sure it's not just like water with like well, almond all of them, all of, Oh, I see. Well, yeah, yes, that's true. You'd have to check that. But all of them, and um, those are brilliant um, biohacker ra- ranting about... He was going on and on about oat milk. He was like, it's oat and water mixed. <laughs> That's what it is, which is true. <laughs> and yet they and charge an extra pound in a coffee shop for yes, it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but I would say oat is best. Uh, not health-wise, but almond also is got the environmental. Yeah. The environment, yeah, the that's true. That's why, uh, that's the only reason. Otherwise, I would say uh, almond. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Are there any other <laughs> questions? Oh, two more on this Really, with Profilo, if you open a box, it will tell you exactly where to put the points. Yeah, I just split each one into two. So I, I so they're very close together, are they? Yeah, so I'd still do them close together. I just do them because then you don't have as much downtime because it's not such a big dose Mm. and it's also less painful. Yeah, so it's the second, it's the second area. one that hurts, exactly. right? The second, the second. It's the jab second amount of the one jab. That oh, well, so you put half in and it's fine. But if you do the it's full, it's the full dose because you get the skin part. stretching mm. and screaming as it stretches. Yeah. So if you do, and I have never seen, um, I've never had someone come back and be like, that didn't work because you did it like that. Yeah. Because it makes no sense why one would work and the other wouldn't. Exactly. Uh, and there was one final question. I had another question from Rosemary about the role of um, probiotics and skin, skin health. Um, can you comment a bit more on that and whether we should be introducing pre and probiotics into our diet regularly for better skin health? Yeah, sure. So prebiotics are uh, fibre, actually, mostly, um, and that is what we, we, the reason for prebiotics are they're basically like the soil that our bacterial colony grow in. So you need to have, you can take as many probiotics as you like, but if your soil isn't good enough, you know, and I mean the environment of your gut isn't good enough, then those bacteria won't flourish. So prebiotics are really brilliant to take if you were to try and stimulate your bacterial colony. Um, skin-wise, it's the same thing that we were talking about. The idea of making those microbes in your gut really happy they will make you really happy. They will make your body work more efficiently. They'll make your skin look better. Then you will get that glow. Um, it also it also helps your your own gut colony um, thrive. So by taking probiotics, I think are best described as a tourist. So when you take them, <laughs> you're taking them every day. They come, they sit, they do their thing, they hang out. And when you stop yeah, taking them, they move on. So, <laughs> is anyone making notes of Rose's wonderful quotes? <laughs> oh, no. right. We've got perfect pants and probiotics for tourists. Perfect pants, tourist <laughs> one. Yeah, because they just, they're travelling through. They're not, they don't stay. They're here for a good time, not a long time. They're here for a good time, <laughs> <laughs> So then you 
you want your own, just ignore this lot. You want your <laughs> own bacteria that you have. You, you, everybody's got their own unique bacterial economy, and you want it to do, you want that to thrive. And taking a probiotic can definitely stimulate that, but as soon as a probiotic has moved on, then it's up to your gut bacteria. And they will, and the reason that it will help your skin is because the microbes um, help your immune system, they'll reduce inflammation. That's right. Well, there's one probiotic which I use all the time, which is called Simproof, which is a liquid, and you take that first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. There are others that I also use because some people it doesn't suit. So something called VSL three is a really nice capsule, and I take I say to take that in the evening before you go to bed. And then um, I mean there are loads. There's one. There's a really nice pre and probiotic called Biomuno, which is a nice prebiotic one. Um, Simproof is nice because it tastes of mango. Yes, it is. Mm. Yeah, it yeah. mm. Well, some people really don't like it. I love it. It has to be in the fridge. It's like nice when it's really cold from the fridge. Yeah, so you, you have, have to keep that one in the fridge. You have to keep it in the fridge, fridge yeah. 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 And Rose, it's not good to take all the time, right? You have to have a break to let you go do some of the work, too. Well, I definitely suggest that you do a course twice a year. Yeah. But in between that, you let your you should be yeah. feeding your own bacteria and your bacteria. Yeah. You know, that's why fermented foods are so good actually because they feed your own bacteria. Yeah. And the course being a month. Well, Simprove it is a three month course actually. Yeah. So I but I would actually do I would start if it was Simprove I'd do twelve weeks, and then I would do six months later four weeks. And with, Six, yeah. do you know what I mean? I wouldn't always do a three month course yeah. Yeah. twice a year. I'd do a three month and then another month, six months later. And then most other ones, I'd do 30 days. Yeah. Twice, twice a year. The only thing I would say is that some people really do notice a difference when they stop taking their probiotics. So I do have a few clients who are on probiotics all the time. All the time. Mm-hmm. And it's not bad for you to let that do the work no, versus the gut. No, but also some people's you know, guts are just very not very really strong and they mm. are, you know some of them have just taken so many antibiotics or yeah. they're you know, not yeah, serious true. not that's that's not through any fault of their own but yeah they're very compromised in the gut area yeah. so yeah. then some people it's, but i do think fermented foods are definitely just the thing to do to feel your gut health in general throughout yeah. the year interesting daily at the south Sauerkraut, things like that. Sauerkraut, three Ks, kraut, kimchi, kombucha. Oh, that's a good way to remember it. Yes, but there's another one, um, nat- natto, which doesn't fit in. Oh. Um, <laughs> so we won't talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love, I've never laughed so much about probiotics. <laughs> um, I think that's probably um, where we should end it now, so everyone can actually get home. Um, but it's been such a joy interviewing these amazing ladies. So a big um, thank you for thank for hosting you. us and for being so. Thank you. Thanks for coming. That's it. Really hope it wasn't cold, anyone. I just feel like it's got cold. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so very heated. It has been. I don't know if the door was open or not. Um, and thank you so much for coming to our talk tonight. Um, we really appreciate appreciate you making it out tonight and hopefully you'll come back for more talks if you haven't already signed up please just leave your um, email on the little referral card we'll add you to our mailing list and we'll always be the first to hear about the talks that we're doing so thank you and happy christmas to everyone yeah happy Happy christmas Christmas. i'll send you a good tequila list i'll send you a good tequila list sounds like a dream list